Good morning. It is week five of the Starlight Mountains Quilt Along. Um, I am Andrea with Happy Call Creations and designed this Starlight Mountains quilt pattern. Um, this is the last week of the quilt along, guys. Oh my goodness. Um, I can't believe this one went by really fast. Five weeks is pretty fast for a quilt along for me, so it's pretty cool that we're going to have finished quilts so stinking fast. All right, I'll wait, wait a couple seconds for some people to jump on. Um, we have a few people jumping on. If you jump on, say hi so I can make sure I can see comments. Um, if it says live in this corner, that means we're live. If it says there's no live, then this is a replay. Um, I put a little sign up, week five, so everybody knows it's week five. Hope you guys are all having a great morning. It is 7 a.m. over on the west coast of the United States today. Still pretty dark out. And I'm drinking my coffee. I found some pumpkin spice creamer at the store, so I was pretty happy. It's pretty yummy. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Odie. I'm glad you guys could join me this morning. Um, so today I just kind of wanted to go over the finishing instructions. If anyone had any questions, please let me know. We'll try to make sure to check the comments throughout. It's kind of, um, I know most people have already put their tops together and they know what they're doing, right? But, um, some people are beginners and they, you know, don't know how to go about having all these beautiful blocks and putting them all together. So I just kind of like to jump on and kind of have a little goodbye video too you know because this is the last the last quilt along video um but then also give some tips for you guys good morning good morning texas wow mary so it's kind of nice for everybody else huh it's a little earlier or a little later in the day for you guys huh jackie and kathy hello hello all right so if you have not downloaded your finishing instructions yet, you can find those um, in the announcement section of the NQ, NQC Quilt Block Challenge group, or um, you can go to their website and search for it as well. But I've also set up a page on my blog. If you go to my blog, Happy Cloud Creations, click on Quilt Alongs, and I set up um, links to all my past Quilt Alongs. That way, if anybody ever wanted to look through those and see the videos for those I've um, linked all those so it'll have the very first top one is Starlight Mountains Quilt Along and that'll have all my blog posts it'll have links to all of the um, links to the NQC's blog posts with the downloads and it also have linked to all my YouTube videos which I'll be uploading this video to YouTube later today all right where to start where to start okay so I don't know if I actually went over um, squaring up our blocks um, I like to wait until I'm all done making all my blocks to do any scoring up. Typically, if you make your block with an accurate scant, fourth inch seam, accurate seam as in you sew your three strips together and that center strip measures what you want it to measure, um, all of your blocks shouldn't really require any trimming. Um, that's why I like to measure each unit after I make them before I make the whole block. That way, okay, my unit's the correct size. I'm sewing all the units together. That block should measure the correct size. And if all your blocks are measuring the correct size or like all your mountain blocks are the same size, all your star, large star blocks are the same size, all your small star blocks are the same size, that's awesome. Then we're going to lay them out. Mine was scrappy, so I laid it out on the ground, took a picture, and then looked at the picture um, that kind of helped me visualize, okay, I like the color placement. Um, it's where I want it to be. If everybody's just going to the main four colors, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys. Um, oh, no. So when you do comments, it doesn't, like, rise up. It's like I have to scroll down. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. If you guys have questions, let me know. Um, so first what I like to do is lay it out, and then I'm going to sew – them into rows, like it says in the um, pattern. Oh, first uh, squaring up the block. So you shouldn't need much, but if you do need some, 
This is already a row. When you're trimming it up, you want to make sure that you try to keep a fourth inch above your um, tips. So if your blocks are ending up bigger than 16 and a half and you're like, oh no, maybe I should trim them up. Maybe don't. So sew your row together first. Because if these are ending up larger than 16 and a half, your little blocks might be ending up larger than they should be too. So it could all work out fine. So um, sometimes I'll do trimming if, say, um, this piece jets up a tiny bit more than this piece. I just like to have a flat surface. So I'll go along with my... I got a big old 16 and a half inch square ruler. This isn't necessary, but I, um, my favorite block size is 16 and a half, 16 finished. And I make a lot of quilt patterns with this size. So I ended up and I splurged and I got this. And it just kind of helps because I can just lay this down, center it up with the center of my block. And I know, oh, there's little pieces like jutting out here or here. I can just trim around the whole thing. Um, because my blocks typically will end up very, very close to 16 and a half. It might have a little pieces just because sometimes your fabric will stretch when you're making those seams and one will stretch long, longer than the other. Or sometimes maybe I accidentally cut a strip a little too large. So I just like to have a nice square block. If you don't need to trim up, that's awesome. Um, you just want to make sure you don't cut these points off. And then you're going to sew your strips together. So here's my mountain strip block my mountain block strip so early guys i'm tired and then i got my star block so if you're sewing these together and you're like okay this seam has a lot of bulk but you want me to press it one side or the other if you would rather press these seams open that's fine that's up to you um sometimes when there's a lot of bulk I will press a seam open right there just so it helps during the quilting process. You don't have a lot of bulk to quilt over. But um, sometimes I just press it to the side because I want it to nest. But you could also just press it down to the side down here, but press it open on that large seam. Um, there's ways to work around it. So here's my large star one. Um, I haven't had a chance to press the seams, but when you go to attach this so you got all your strips. Some of your strips are longer than the other. What I would suggest is instead of trimming down those long strips, I would make your short strips longer. Um, so say my star, um, my star row is longer than my mountain row because my mountain block has a lot of more seams, a lot more seams than my star block. And I didn't use a correct fourth inch seam. My seam ended up a little too big. So my block ended up um, a lot smaller. This one's 16 inch blocks and this one's 16 and a half. So what I would do is I would take like a two inch strip of your background color and I would just sew that on the edges, both sides. You could even sew sashing above and below each row to make your quilt longer. And also you wouldn't have to worry about matching up these two rows seams together as much. If you have a sashing, sashing, sashing strip in between. Um, kind of like, I'm just gonna show these later. Like this, this quilt pattern has a large sashing, sashing strip in between the blocks. So then it would be less notable, noticeable if your seams don't match up exactly the same. So what I would do, okay, so this one was too short. So I put extra pieces on the ends, say. I would still take this center point of my block and match it up with this center point of this block when you go to pin them together. So lay one on top of the other, match the center points together. I do this when I'm they completely fit together as well. I would ma match the center points together, start pinning from the center out. Try not to stretch 
one strip longer than the other, just kind of gently laying them together and do that. It would be a lot easier if you put sashing in between, then you wouldn't have to worry about um, like these two seams being further apart. You wouldn't have to worry about that as much. Um, but if you are, if they're all matching up and they're all the correct size, I like to take this, these two seams and match it up with the row next to it. Match these seams up first, and then I'll go through the block, and then I'll do one side, and I'll do the other. So I like to try to nest my seams as much as possible, um, and it should work out good if you match the 16 inches up, and then you can match all the other seams up as well. I have the second color to finish before I put them together. LOL, I am a tabby hem. Oh, that's fine, Roberta. You got two quilts. No, a faster than me. I was hoping to have my whole top together this morning, but I did not. I just have strips. I didn't get much sewing done this weekend. Does anybody have any questions about sewing the main part of your quilt top together? So some people aren't using borders, which that's fine. If you're doing the twin, queen, or king, um, I designed my suggested layouts, or if you were going to put a six inch total border, like a this one has a two and then a four inch border, um, I designed those that way. So if you don't wanna use those borders, your quilt will end up a little bit smaller than those suggested sizes that I listed. So once we got our all of our strips done, and then we have all of our strips sewn together, we're going to have a quilt top. Then you're going to add your border. Um, I hope these instructions make sense. What I like to do is um, create one long strip, kind of like a binding strip. And then you can lay that strip on the edge of your quilt Gently, we don't want to pull either one. If you pull one or the other, um, it could make your borders wavy. And so you're just going to lay it down and then measure it. Sometimes I'll measure it like a half inch longer than my quilt top. And I like to pin from the center out. Just gently, like gently smoothing the two pieces together, pinning. I like to pin like every so often, probably what, like every three inches. Um, kind of by the seams sometimes. And then I like to sew that and press toward the border because it's going to be less bulk if you press toward the border. And then once you have one border on, you're going to add your second border the same way. Just kind of measure it and then trim it down to the size. Um, each border is the same if you're doing a twin, queen, or king. You're gonna want obviously more strips, um, but I still recommend the small border being two inches and then the large border being four inches if you want those exact sizes. You can definitely do different borders. You can do larger borders, smaller borders. I saw somebody put half square triangles in their borders. I saw somebody um, make oh, more of the stars. Where is it? Right here, the stars and put stars on the side of their quilt. That's really cute, I like that. Um, so, you know, make it your own. This is the time to like make those quilts personalized to you. And this will be my small border and this will be my large border just because I really love blue, blue and yellow together. So um, this is Kona Cotton and Duckling and this is Kona Cotton and Lagoon. These colors are both inside my quilt. So I'm gonna have those as my borders. Does it matter which row you attach first, like start in the middle and add tops, middles, rows, one, two, three, four, attach? Um, Mary, what I actually will do is I'll lay it out, all my rows. Say here's all my rows. I'll pin these two together and then I'll pin like these two together. I'll go to my machine and sew these two seams and then I will pin this to this one. So like I try to go to the machine and sew as much as possible at one time. So I will like sew two rows, um, pin these, pin these, sew two rows at one time, then I'll attach it to my middle one, middle one, something like that. If I have six rows, I'll attach um, each two row together and then I'll go back and sew those rows together. Um, 
I don't think it matters which rows you sew together first. Um, at least for me, it doesn't. And so just as long as you aren't stretching one row longer than the other, that's why it's nice to um, match up those seams if you can. That way you're not having one row longer than the other. Do you put top and bottom on first then sides? Um, let's see. I can never remember what I do. Okay, so per the instructions, I put the side borders on first. And then I put the top borders on and the bottom border. Um, that's how I designed it. But you can definitely do whichever one you want to do first. If you would rather do the top and bottom borders first and then the sides, you can do it that way too, Lil. Um, but I like to do the sides first and then the top and bottom. That way, kind of like, it's kind of like you have a big, long strip at the top. Easy instructions. Thank you. Awesome, Barb. I'm glad you like the instructions. Can you give some measurements for putting a flying geese into center of outer border? Just so you more borders on right now. Um, what I would do, Julia, if you want to put a flying geese right in the center of your border, I would make your flying geese. I would um, like say you need your border strip a certain length. Take that length, cut it in half, sew that border, that flying geese into that center, and then line the flying geese up with the center mark of your quilt. Um, you'll be able to see it like so the star large star block is the center. So you'll want to match that flying geese up with that large star block and then pin out from there, and that'll be centered up. All right. So once you have your borders on. You have a top. I like to make sure my top is nice and pressed, not wrinkly. Um, if you're going to be sending this to a long armor, sometimes they require you to trim off all the little, you know, little strings on the back because all my quilts have little strings on the back. Trim all those off. I don't know. Some do, some don't. I've never used a long armor yet, filter yet, just because I find it more convenient to quilt it myself on my domestic machine. And um, it ends up being a lot cheaper that way too. And that can give me more money for fabric. Okay. So we have our tops done. Um, my finishing instructions are definitely just a suggestion. If you have your favorite method of finishing your quilt, do that. Um, I like to include these in all my patterns just for those people that have never made a quilt before. If you're a beginner and you just have no idea how to go about this. Also, if you go to my week five blog post, I give links to tutorials of basting, binding or basting, quilting and binding your quilts. That way, if you're a visual learner, you can see step by step how to do these things. So um, that's on my happycloudcreations.com website. You can find those there. Um, first, you're going to want to square up your quilt. So what that means, oh, actually, you don't want to square up your quilt yet. First, you're going to want to baste it. So basting is basically a sandwich. Um, you have your backing fabric. You're going to want that uh, right face, right side facing down, wrong side facing up. I like to tape mine on my, um, actually right here, I moved my kitchen table, um, my dining room table, and then I tape it onto my tile floor. Um, you're not going to want to pull it too tight, but you're going to want it nice and smooth. And so I tape it down with painter's tape, the blue painter's tape. Um, um, and then I will go and I will lay down my batting and smooth it out and then I'll cut it to size because a lot of times I will buy the like this is a throw size quilt but I bought the queen size batting um I'm using warm and plush and it really only comes I think in queen it might come in smaller sizes but I like to have the extra because I like to make pot holders and I like to make baby size quilts so I get the queen size and I lay it out and then I will lay my top on top, top of that 
and then I'll go, okay, this is how big my batting needs to be. I like to have it about three inches wider than your top, uh, at the top and the bottom. You, If you're sending it to a long armor, they're gonna want your backing and batting to be three inches wider as well. Sometimes I can get away with smaller than that. Um, like if I'm doing a baby quilt and I only wanna use a 42 inch width um, fabric and my quilt is actually only 40 inches, um, I will do that sometimes if I don't wanna piece my backing. My go-to backing, when I don't want to piece my backing, I usually will buy this um, Target Threshold Ultra Soft sheet. A lot of people do not like sheets, quilters, but I find that if you do a 300 thread count or less, like 300 to 200 thread count, 100% cotton, they work nicely. Um, and then you don't have to piece your backing if you're worried about piecing a backing and this is your your first quilt um and the, you could just buy a flat you don't have to buy <coughs> excuse me you don't have to buy the whole set you can just buy a flat sheet this is like ten dollars i think but they didn't have anything bright and vibrant so i found this 100 percent cotton um kids sheet set and I thought this would be really cute with mine. It's a nice dot colorful. It's a cotton sheet set. So I'll probably use the fitted sheet for like a baby size quilt. I'm going to use the flat sheet for this quilt. So I will just lay that on my ground, tape it out, smooth my batting, do my top, cut it everything to size, except for the sheet, obviously. I will keep that as large as it is already taped down. I will pull that back. If you're going to use pins, at this point, everything's all nice and smooth. Um, I like using curved basting pins. Um, they're a little easier than just the regular straight ones. They're a little curved, so it's easier to pin them into the three layers. When I'm using pins, I like to do about the width of my hand all over the quilt. Um, that is very time consuming. So, a lot of times I will use spray-based. Um, I, I used 505 for my last one and I threw away the can because it was empty. But um, 505 is a pretty good brand. I liked it. Um, it wasn't super sticky, but it was sticky enough. This one was okay too. It's basting adhesive spray and bond. Um, this one's pretty good too. I got this one at Joanne Fabrics. Um, with the quarantine, it was like trying to get them on Amazon for a while. You just couldn't and, or they were like super expensive spray, spray based. So I tried to do, um, it at Albertsons or maybe I got this at Walmart with grocery pickup. I may have done that. I got this one online, Sulky. Um, it's called Sulky Temporary Spray Adhesive. Um, this one's better for people with allergies because it has very little scent it is non-toxic, odorless, clear. The only problem I had with the Sulky is if you plan on quilting your quilt and you're going to get it done in a day or two, go for this. It's good. It's sticky. Um, but it dissipates. So it says bonding will disappear within two to five days without any stain. And so it, sometimes it takes me like a week to quilt a quilt. And so... Um, this started dissipating. I'm like, ah, I gotta finish this quilt. Um, so if you take a long time to quilt your quilts, I would not recommend this one. But if you are doing like a baby quilt and you know you're gonna get it done in a day or two, this is a really good option. I used to always use this June Taylor spray basting. They changed the formula and this one in this looking can um, is way too sticky. Um, it's even hard to wash off your hands. I washed my quilt and dried it and it still smelt like this spray based. Um, I had emailed them, the company, and they said that uh, they changed the formula back or something. So I have not gotten a new bottle. So I don't know about the ones at the store, how they are. Ooh, some questions, let's see. Thank you for the wonderful pattern design. Thank you. Um, okay, yes, you can use spray base if you want. 
Um, how I like to use spray based. Okay, so Mary says, do you use the nonstick needles for quilting? I've never heard about nonstick needles. That's cool to look into. Um, uh, so some spray based leave residue on your needle like this sticky one does, but these other ones don't as bad. Um, and I've heard also if you let it dry, it won't leave a residue on your needle. Um, so what I do to spray base is, okay, I have all my three layers done. I'll pull the top off and then I'll pull my batting halfway back. I spray my batting, like just in like a 12 inch section. I don't spray the whole thing. And then I'll hold one piece and then I'll kind of just smooth it out from one side to the other. And then I'll spray it on the batting again and smooth it out to the ends and go ahead and do the second side the same way. And then I'll lay my top down, pull it halfway back, spray the batting, lay it out, trying to make sure your seams are all straight and lay it all out. Um, Emily Dennis, she has a really great basting tutorial and that link is on my blog. Um, she actually videos herself doing the spray base. So if you're interested in spray based, I would definitely watch that. Spray based end pin, I typically don't pin when I spray base, um, just because I really hate pinning and the last time I pinned, I stabbed my thumb and blood got on my quilt. So I'm kind of mad at um, the safety pins. So I don't pin, but some people do spray base and they add pins around the edges for extra security. Um, but I don't, I just typically just use my spray base and I'm testing out new spray bases because this I used to love and I hate it now. And so that's why I would just have been trying out new ones. The 505 is really good. I think I might buy more of that for this quilt. Um, what machine do you use for quilting? I just use my domestic um, Janome. It's actually a heavy duty Janome machine. It isn't like specifically made for quilting, but I was making a lot of pot holders which have a lot of layers. So that's why I wanted a heavy duty machine. But the throat is only like this wide and it gets the job done, which, I guess I will go over quilting now. Um, if Does anybody have a question about basting? You can also um, thread base, which is I think taking really big um, strings through just kind of like hand kind of basting it with thread and needle. Does spray basting work on minky fleece? I don't know, Kimberly. I've never tried spray based on minky fleece. Has anybody else in the group tried spray based on minky fleece? Let Kimberly know if it works well. I don't see why it won it. Um, as long as you try not to stretch that minky at all and just try to like maybe pat it down on your batting if you use batting. Should the basting spray be on batting or material? I don't usually use basting. Um, I noticed when I read the cans of them, most of them say to spray it on the batting. But some do say spray on fabric. It all depends. Like... Yeah, this one says hold can 10 inches from batting and spray. I don't know if it works better if you, I just always typically do the batting. I don't know if it works better that way. I noticed if you spray too much on the fabric, it'll like leak through. So maybe that's why it's better to spray on the batting because it's thicker and it won't like soak through. So we got our quilts all basted. Can the back of the quilt be a total different color? Yes, Wanda, it can be whatever color you want it to be. Um, I typically will just like, because sometimes you can't get a sheet that is exactly the same color. So I'll just go with one that kind of looks well with the front of the quilt. Um, like these aren't the exact same colors that are in my quilt, but it's close enough. So I'm like, hey, and it's cool. So that's what I'm doing. So do what you want to do, Wanda. If you want the front of your quilt to be yellows and oranges and pinks, but the back of your quilt you want to be bright blue, do it. All right, so we have our quilt basted. Now it's time to quilt our quilt. Um, some people send it to a long armor. Some people will do hand tied quilt quilting. Um, there's a link to a tutorial, I think by Susie Quilts on my blog. Um, my very first quilt was hand tied. I didn't know what I was doing. But uh, that's how my mom always used to do her quilts. So um, I actually used yarn um, with a big needle to quilt my quilt. Um, 
I was like 12, 13 when I did that. Um, and I still like it and it's still cozy. And um, those ties are still holding up after what? How many arms do I have? Um, I'm 38 and I made it when I was like 12, 13. And um, it's still holding together. So that's good, right? So hand tying is a good option. I like to um, do quilting with my walking foot. This helps pull both sides of the fabric through because it has a foot that kind of grabs onto the fabric on the top and then you have your feed dogs on the bottom. So everything's going through your machine at the same time. And I just use my domestic machine and I take my quilt and roll it up super tight to stick it through my um, throat of my machine. I think the largest quilt I've quilted so far might be, I'm, I'm still quilting on my Rainier Echoes quilt. And I think that's like an 80 by 80. Um, and I can roll it up and stick it in my machine. Use spray base in the house. What about the edges of your floor or walls? Well, Mary, I spray base on my tile. I like to crack open the window for any fumes um, because I say well ventilated area. But then I just um, take a soapy washcloth with like dish soap and I scrub the floor around where any overspray was and it comes right up um sometimes i miss spots in my head and it's like that floor is sticky but usually it, the washcloth with a little bit of soap on it will wipe it up what fabric do you use for the backing for warmth um kimberly you could use um flannel that would make your quilt a little warmer um some people like to use a minky something soft like that um I like to use this warm and plush batting because it makes it a little warmer. It's a little thicker than a regular cotton batting. Um, you could probably use fleece. Use whatever you want, man. I often do the back totally different. Ah, equals two quilts. Like, do you do two, like, tops? I've seen that before where somebody does a top on the bottom and top on the top. Top on the top and top on the bottom. That's pretty cool. All right, quilting, yes. So my go-to quilting is with a walking foot. Um, some people like free motion quilting. I bought a free motion quilting foot. I looked on my Janome website to find which one would match my machine because my machine is not a quilting machine. And um, I needed a low shank foot. So just make sure you get the correct one. I still need to try this out. I think I'm gonna try it out on, on some um, place nets. But my go-to is just using my walking foot and I do straight lines. So like with my um, original quilt, sorry day, uh, Starlight Mountain quilt, I just did about one inch apart lines from top to bottom. And I kind of just used my um, seams as a guide and I lined, see how this has like a little bump out? I lined that bump out with my seam, which makes it about a half inch from each um, seam, which makes it about an inch apart along my quilt. And so since there's no seams up here, I took my ruler and my hair marker and just continued those seams up through the top so that I could just use my ruler. But you can also, if you have one of these walking foots, a lot of them come with this guide and you can measure, when this is on your machine, measure the center to the guide. Like, say I want my lines to be an inch and a half apart or two inches. Just measure from the needle to the guide. And you can do one seam and then just follow that seam along your whole quilt. I was going to show you a couple different ways. I think this next quilt, um, the colorful starlight mountains quilt that I'm making. I may take my walking foot and um, echo the seams. So echoing the seams is kind of like I did in my um, Cobalt Canyon quilt. If you can see, I just kind of did a half inch from each seam. And I used my walking foot to go along those seams so that it was a half inch. And then in the larger spots, I used my hair marker to draw out where I wanted to use those quilting lines. Um, so if you see, it just kind of echoes. And I kind of like that look because stitching in the ditch for me, 
I'm not super precise at getting my needle and thread inside those ditches. And also, if you decided to press some of those seams open and you're stitching in the ditch, it kind of is like you're not stitching to anything. You're just stitching to thread. You're not stitching to the actual fabric. So that's kind of why I like to echo it about a um, half inch, fourth inch to a half inch from each seam. Do you start quilting from the center? Oh, there's more questions about that too, huh? Okay, so depending on what I'm doing. So like if I'm echoing a block like this, this one, the Starlight Mountains that I'm going to do, I will start from the center. I will sew that center block and then I will go out from around that. But if I'm doing a top to the bottom, um, I like to stitch a stitch all along the top of the quilt. Sometimes I'll start from the center and do one half and then go and do the other half. But sometimes I will just start from one edge and go to the other edge. If you have a really sticky, sticky um, spray base or you're pinned really good, there should be no shifting. But if you prefer starting from that center and going out and going out, that is um, a great way to do it as well. So Virginia, squaring up. So um, I like to quilt my whole quilt before I square it up at all, just in case anything does shift a little bit. I know if you use a puffier batting like a polyester or a cotton poly blend, sometimes you lay it out and it does end up going further than you expected it to. Cotton does not as much and I use cotton more and it doesn't shift as much. Um, so I square it up after it's all done quilting. I just wanted to show you a couple more suggested quilting options. Um, if you're just using your walking foot and doing a straight line quilting. So this is the happy block swap quilt pattern that I used in this group. I think it was like last year, right guys? Um, for this one, I just went top to bottom with this little multi zigzag stitch. So it makes it look a little fancier than if you were just to do straight line from top to bottom. Um, it gives it good texture and um, it just looks a little cooler, the multi-zigzag multi stitch. So I really like that one. For if you are a beginner, it makes it really easy just doing a straight line from top to bottom. And you don't have to worry about being perfect. I like to call them organic lines. <clears throat> and then this one, this is my... Happy flower garden quilt. For this one, I, um, if you can see it, I made a big wavy line from top to bottom. And then I stitched on that line. And then I took my walking foot with guide and I just kind of followed it. That huge wavy, I made it really big from top to bottom. You can see. And so it kind of just gave it a flowy kind of look to the quilt. Do you start quilting from the center? Same question. Yes, I sometimes I will start going from the center out or sometimes if I'm just doing straight to the bottom, sometimes I will do um, like every two inches and then I will come back and fill in between those. Um, like I'll do every a line every two inches and then I'll come back and I'll do a line in between those. So it's every one inch. I like to do every one inch just because it gives the quilt a lot more durability. I like the texture, but check your batting because your batting will tell you how far apart they need to be. Some say you can quilt up to 10 inches apart. Some say five inches apart. So check your batting. It'll tell you how far apart you need to quilt your quilt. When you stitch the lines for quilting, do you start at the top of a quilt and work toward the bottom? Do you start each row at the same edge or alternate? <clears throat> I like to, when I'm doing straight top to bottom, I do start at the top, I go to the bottom, and I like to go all the same way. I don't do alternating. I saw someone that accidentally did half their quilt going this way and half their quilt going this way, and like you could see the fabric kind of um, went one way and went one other way. Um, but typically I spray a lot of spray base, so my fabric doesn't shift at all. Um, but I do, I just go from one side to the other. Sometimes I start in the center, sometimes I start in the side, but typically when you're quilting, you wanna start in the center and go out. So like if you're quilting 
just from the center you go out just kind of because especially with polyester um it flattens and pushes out a little bit and so you want to go center out how do you decide what thread color to use on the quilt over the different colors <clears throat> So a lot of times I will just go with the lightest color in my quilt. So like this one, my gray thread was a lot darker than this silver Kona cotton. So I just used it a white. And even though you can see that white on these navy pieces, I don't mind because it kind of gives it a second color to the quilt and second dimension, second um, creative aspects. But like this quilt, the backing was a lot darker, a lot darker gray. So I used a gray thread to quilt this quilt. So I just kind of go with what the lightest color in my quilt is. Or you can do something totally different. Say I got this hot pink in here and I want to ac accentuate that hot pink. I'm going to do hot pink um, thread to quilt the quilt. What is a Hera marker, please? Sandy, a Hera marker, H-E-R-A. Um, it's from Clover, and it just kind of makes a um, crease in your fabric. It's good for marking your half square triangles or flying geese. It's also good for marking your lines on your quilt to see where you want to quilt it. You can find these on Amazon at your local quilt shop. Um, Joanna Fabrics, they're like, like $6, I think. Um, some people use a doll side of a knife, butter knife, but um, that's a little too scary for me. So I got this. Let's see. I'm going to try my walking foot with this quilt. Thanks for the great pattern. Awesome, Roberta. I'm excited to see, because you usually hand tie your quilts, right, Roberta? Um, I'm excited to see how that goes for you. Um, good idea to sew the top. Do I do that the long arm I use, but didn't think... Oh my just yeah um i got that tip for, i think from emily dennis because she does a lot of top to bottom quilting on her quilt she'll use that multi zigzag also her machine has one of those wavy lines um mine does not because it's a more basic machine um but if you have a quilting specific machine it might have that wavy stitch which looks really cool too have you ever quilted a quilt with a variegated thread yes i have tammy which it's in my family room right now. Um, but I like how that turns out. I, it was like a pink variegated thread. And it had a lot of pink in the quilt. And I love how it turned out. So that's a really cool option to do as well. So we got our quilts quilted. Um, and they're all nice, but we got to bind them. First, you're going to want to square that up. So when I quilt my quilt, there's a little bit of overhang of the batting and binding. And what I do... What did I do with that? I usually take my large square ruler. I don't know what I did with that. I had it. Oh, right here. Ah. So I'll take my large ru square ruler, or I used I used to just use my 12 inch square ruler. I'll put that in the corner of my quilt. I'll lay it on my table, and then I'll square up the edge with this so that I can square. Make sure that edge is square. And then I will butt this ruler up to the edge of that square like that. And then I will continue down the side um, until I kind of get close to the next corner. And I'll put this down on the corner and make sure that corner is um, square. Also, I'll try to line this up with the seams in my quilt, making sure it's the same distance away from that seam. So because usually, you know, it's not very drastic and it's nice when you have a border because then you're not worrying about cutting into any of your points. Um, if your fabric jets out a little bit, you don't have to worry about it because it's just border. Um, so that's what I like to do to square it up. Is Sandy, is there a one walking foot that is better than others? I'm not sure. I just got the walking foot that goes with my machine. There are some generic ones you can buy. But I looked on my Janome website to see which one would fit my machine. And so this one is specific for Janome machines. But I know there are some generic ones online that you can get. Um, 
but I'm not, and I think you can get some at, you might be able to get it at your local sewing machine shop or uh, at Joann's, but I, I do a lot of online shopping just because I got little kids. Can you post a picture of the variegated thread quilt? I'm scared to try it and would love to see an example. Sure, I haven't posted um, on my blog. Maybe uh, I'll link it to here. It was my Aloha Ripples quilt. I did a Aloha Ripple quilt along a while back. Um, and I used the variegated thread on the when I did with the quilt along. That's an actually a free pattern. Um, so once you have it quilted and squared up, you're going to want to add your binding. binding. Um, this is kind of a very basic, easy way to do binding. But you can find better um, options out there. Um, in my blog, I link to Susie Quilt's video of how she does her binding. And I love that method. And that's usually what I use. Um, oh, there's a little more questions about quilting. And I think there's a little bit of a delay, too. Okay, so what stitch length do I use? I usually bump my stitch length up to three when I'm doing quilting with my walking foot. And you you don't want to go too fast. If you go too fast, sometimes your stitch length won't be even. So you kind of just want to try to go at a consistent um, medium pace when you're quilting it. Any tips on not cutting off my points? Um, you're going to want to make sure... If, if you're not using a border fabric, Deborah, um, just try to make sure that when you're trimming it up, the point is about fourth inch from uh, the edge of the fabric. Because you're, when you sew on your binding, you're going to sew that with a fourth inch seam. So you don't want to have it right up. Like you don't want to cut too far into that point. Okay, binding. So I like to make my binding by, I'm using stripe binding. Um, I like to uh, draw one line to the other. I kind of line it up like this. And I sew one line to the other. And then I'll just go and cut it about fourth inch from the edge of that. And then I will just press it to one side. And I press it in half because I like to have a double layer of fabric going around my quilt. Some people will just use a single layer of fabric. But I feel like um, double layer just gives you double, you know, double duty of fabric around your edges of your quilt. And that's uh, what gets worn a lot. Um, little kids like to chew on the binding. Um, you know, and it rubs up against people's face. So I like to do a double layer of fabric. And I, I'm actually not ready to bind my quilts. But I'll just kind of show you how I do it. Pretend like this is the edge of my quilt. I go about 10 inches in. And I line this up with the edge of my quilt. But I also kind of like to go to the edge to make sure your edge is not landing on this bulky um, part that you sewed together. So try to make sure your first one's not landing on that because sometimes it's hard to miter your corner and make that point on your corner really nice if you have a lot of bulk there. So I just do that, sew it down to the top of my quilt. And then once it's sewed to the top, I just wrap it around. Some people like to iron it up and then wrap it around. I just wrap it around so that you have this part on the back of your quilt and your hand sewing this part down on the back of your quilt. I like to use, I think it's called an invisible stitch or ladder stitch. And so you can't even like see it really, my thread. But I try to match my thread to my um, binding color or the backing color. Um, Usually the binding color, though. You can also sew your binding strip to the back, flip it over, and use your machine to stitch it down. Um, mine never really turns out very nice that way, so I like to hand stitch it down. It's kind of a relaxing thing to do while you sit and watch 
TV with the family. Um, I do like to, when I'm hand stitching it, I kind of just clip like three or four of these out where I'm sewing just so that it stays down kind of where I want it. Um, and I also like using a leather thimble. I tried using a plastic rubber one before and it just wasn't very good. Um, this metal, I don't really like that. So I just use the soft part Ooh, right there. Um, I think next time I'll get one that just doesn't have metal on it. Um, because I've been using this for a while and it's kind of getting worn out. And then also I found these. I think they're called thread pullers. But this really helps with um, stitching down your binding. Um, also, it would help with hand quilting. It just kind of helps you grab that needle a little better. I have another one for, I think, this finger, but I don't know where it is. I think the kids took it. So we got our basting, we got our quilting, and we got our binding done. Now we can wash our quilts. What if you did not wash your fabric before you made your quilt? Because Andrew told you you don't need to wash your fabric. Um, if you have a lot of different colors in your quilts, I recommend using a Shout color catcher. Um, they're like these little sheets that kind of look like a dryer sheet. And you put it in the wash with your quilt. If there's a lot of different colors, sometimes I'll put up to like three of those shout color catcher, shout color catchers in with my quilt, wash it, and that will soak up any loose dyes. Because I made a quilt that had red, navy, white in it. And I used a couple of those. It soaked up all the loose dye and my white was still very, very bright white. Um, because I just prefer washing my fabric after my quilt is made it feels like you have got a little bit extra fabric because you're not losing it in the fraying or the shrinking and then it also gives your quilt you know just a little bit cozier crinkly look um when you don't wash your fabric ahead of time thank you for such great project to get me back into quilting after 30 years oh fun i'm so glad you got back into quilting it is really a fun hobby um i really enjoy it I never used any type of thimble needles to say I usually have sore fingers. Yes. So, Roberta, I used to just like have a sore finger and then I'd have to put like one of my, a band aid on my finger. And so I'm like, okay, I'm breaking down. This is like $10. <laughs> and I was like, I used a coupon, I think, at Joanne's and got it for a little cheaper. I'm like, wow, that's really worth it not to have a sore finger, especially if you're like, use making a binding for a really large quilt and it's taking you hours and hours and hours. Should you use a, sh a color catcher each time you wash it or just the first time? I usually just use it the first time. If it is like a, like, um, a quilt that has a bright white with navy and red. So I gave that one away to um, a family member and I actually, with the card, I put a shout color catcher in there and told them, even though I washed it once, I wanted to make sure that the second time they washed it, it um, soaked up any loose dye. But you, typically, I just do it the first time, and it's okay. Um, if you take the color catcher out, and it's like super dark navy, you might want to be like, okay, maybe I'll try washing it with it again. Um, typically, just the first time. Um, so... I don't know. Do you guys have any more questions? It's kind of sad that this is the last week of the quilts along. I'm really excited to see everybody's quilts. Make sure to post them in here. Um, and if you haven't yet, follow me over at Happy Cloud Creations um, on Facebook. It's facebook.com shop Happy Cloud Creations or on Instagram, which is Instagram Happy Cloud Creations. Um, to see what I'm working on next, I'm starting to work on a new quilt pattern. Um, I have no idea when that will be out because... I'm doing remote learning with my children, so I don't get a lot of time to sew right now. Um, stay tuned for the next National Quilter Circle Quilt Along. They will definitely post it in the announcements of this group when they decide to do another one. I'm not sure when I will be doing another one, but if you follow me over on my page, um, I will definitely let you guys know because I do have my own Quilt Along group. That's my little kiddo, Cloud. He just woke up, so... I guess it is time for me to get these kids ready for school. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. And 
Do you know when they're doing another quilt along? No, I don't, Virginia. But make sure to stay posted. They will definitely post it in this group. I'm sure they'll give you a few weeks until the next one so you can finish up this quilt. Make sure to post your pictures. Pictures. I'm excited to see. And I will post a picture as soon as I get done with mine as well. Um, share my scrappy, colorful one with you guys. So I'm going to go get these kids ready for school. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.